Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna see how we can diagnose the canvas using this budget oscilloscope. You have already seen some other videos from this oscilloscope on the channel. In this video, we're gonna see how powerful this one is to read the waveform from the canvas network. If you're interested to learn more about the canvas network, you can find the link for that video in the video description. But very quickly, canvas is one of the most common networks used in the cars, which is used for sharing the data and communication between control units. You may have the canvas in different classes, like this car that we have today has two different classes of the canvas network, high speed and low speed. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how to locate and read the waveform of the high speed canvas network using this oscilloscope. And of course, I'm gonna make another video for the low speed canvas network as well so please make sure to subscribe the channel to get the notification when we upload that video as well so first of all this budget oscilloscope is from f near c and this is the model if you are interested to learn more about this oscilloscope you can find the link in the video description it's a two channel oscilloscope so it's going to be very helpful for me to do the diagnostic today because on the can bus we have two wires actually a pair of twisted wires for finding the canvas here on the obd to connector we can locate the canvas as well high speed canvas is connected between the engine control module transmission control module instrument cluster four wheel drive if you have any electronic power steering if you have any so basically between the critical control units we have the high speed canvas network connected so the high speed canvas network that i'm talking about is what you see right now on the screen on this wiring diagram as you see multiple control units are connected to this network and the network itself consists of a pair of twisted wires so you see two wires on the network one of them is can high and the other one is can low this can high and can low are not representing the speed they are actually each single wire of the network if you watch the other video that i put in the video description you will learn a lot about the canvas network we also have one full online course for the canvas network that you can find the link to that in the video description so right now here on the obd2 connector two pins out of these 16 pins two of them are for the canvas so generally pin number 6 and 14 on the obd2 connector they are for the canvas so it means when you connect your scan tool your scan tool is going to be part of the canvas as well to get the information from those control units which are communicating with the canvas so as i said canvas consists of a pair of twisted wires so you see the wires twisted right here between these two the red one is can high the blue one is can low so we're gonna go ahead to read the waveform from these two at the very same time so you can back prop or you can insert the prop from here as well because these test props are not really thick they're not gonna damage the pins on the connector so i'm gonna insert this one right here On the oscilloscope, as you see, one end of the props are connected to the oscilloscope. This is channel one, this is channel two. On the other end of each oscilloscope props, I have these two. This is gonna go for picking up the signal from here. And this is actually for a good ground. And I put the channel two on CAN bus low, just like this. So down here, I have the channel one and channel two. My channel two is off. I can click on here and turn on the channel two as well. I'm getting something right here but you can of course click on the auto as well to see how this oscilloscope can adjust the waveform for us. Just wait a second. All right, this is what oscilloscope did for us. We could have done the manual setting adjustment as well, but this is what oscilloscope did for us. So if I pause it, this is the waveform that we are getting from the CAN bus. Of course you can adjust the waveform to have a taller or shorter waveform from here on channel one or channel two. For example, right now you see that channel two is a little taller than the channel one. So we can adjust the channel two as well. Right now here we can read the voltage setting because the previous one, which was like this, we had 500 millivolts on channel two. When we say 500 millivolts, it means each division right here equals to 500 millivolts. And on channel one, I had one volt so the voltage setting on these two was not what I wanted. So I'm going to go for 
adjusting the channel 2 as well as you see i have channel 1 and channel 2 both on 1 volt as i said 1 volt on each division right now here so i can just bring the channel 2 a little up so this is what i have we can adjust the time setting from here as well to see more number of signals on this waveform and if i run it you see more waveform right now here just like this and if i pause it we're gonna have the waveform so this is a good waveform right now and as you see this oscilloscope is capable of reading the waveform of CAN bus high and CAN bus low on the high speed CAN bus network on this car this is a good thing so basically that's the first sign to be able to read the waveform right now that we have the waveform we can go ahead to understand something from this first of all why do we need to check the waveform of the CAN bus is it really important yes it is because if CAN bus is down you will have no communication between the scan tool and those control units which are connected to the high speed CAN and which are supposed to share the information with a scan tool through the CAN bus. So CAN bus is down, you will have no communication between your scan tool and multiple control units. So one way is to read the waveform with oscilloscope to see what's going on. Of course, you can diagnose the CAN bus with multimeter as well. Not this accurate. Multimeter is not going to give you the waveform. With multimeter, you can just read the total resistance of the CAN bus and an average voltage you can find the link for that one in the video description too but here we can get a lot of information so can high and can low they are both working they should be symmetrical they are as you see the voltage between each one of them they are exactly symmetrical we don't want any sort of abnormality if you see for example CAN bus is not giving you the waveform it's completely gone there could be something wrong on the wiring maybe CAN bus high and low they are shorted to each other on the CAN bus, if one wire is shorted to the ground, normally it's going to affect the other one as well. Sometimes if CAN high is shorted to ground, it's going to affect the CAN low as well. So you see no waveform or you see a lot of abnormality on the CAN bus network. So of course, after that, we can proceed for checking the wiring step by step. But right now we have the waveform. That's a good sign. What else we can get from this waveform? The voltage level is quite important for us as well. On the CAN high and CAN low, the voltage level is different. The base voltage for each one of them should be around 2.5. For example, right now, if I go for the cursor and if I put the V1 right here and V2 just right there. So you see that on channel one, I'm checking the V1, which is the maximum voltage and V2, which is the base voltage. So I can read it from here as well. So V1, the maximum voltage is almost three and a half volts and V2, which is the base voltage, is almost 2.5 volts. So basically on the CAN high, the voltage should change between 2.5 and 3.5. When you check with the multimeter, you're going to get something very different because your multimeter is not capable of reading the voltage, which is changing this fast. So it's going to give you something an average, 2.6, 2.7 volts. That's it. But here you can see the actual voltage, which is going to help you a lot to find any abnormality. And if you go for channel 2, we can change the V1 and V2. So I put the V1 down here and V2 just right there. V2 this time is on the base, which is almost 2.5. And V1 is the minimum voltage, which is 1.5. So the voltage on the CAN low is going to change quickly between 2.5 to 1.5. So this is the difference on CAN high, 2.5 to 3.5. On CAN low, from 2.5 to 1.5. So this is gonna tell us that the CAN high and CAN low, they are both working normally. On this car, I don't have any issues. That's why the CAN bus high and CAN bus low, they are working normally. But if you do have any issues, for example, if one CAN bus is shorter to ground, you're gonna have way different network. CAN high is gonna bring the CAN bus low down, or if CAN low is shorter to ground, it's gonna affect the voltage and the waveform on CAN high as well, that you can verify it with the waveform in upcoming videos i'm gonna make more videos about the CAN bus when they are experiencing any sort of issue so we can see how any short to ground or short to power or any abnormality on the CAN bus can affect the waveform so please don't forget to subscribe the channel to get the notification when i upload those videos for supporting us you can subscribe the channel like the video and share it with your friends thank you very much guys for watching again if you are interested to learn more about this oscilloscope you can find the link in the video description or the first comment down
below.